Good morning, friends. Hey, how are you this morning? This is a little pop-up. I had a request to show how I got the little void, I'm gonna go up close, within the embossed frame um, from the, uh, from the um, folders. So, hi, Debbie. So I um, wanted to uh, have a little live just so I could show everybody that was not able to come to open house how to get the little framed area within each folder that we have. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Thank you for being here. Thank you for requesting this, Sharon. Um, there might be more people that wanna know how to do this. Okay. So let me show you some samples. Any folder will work. I'm using the basics. Here is some vanilla cardstock. So you can see a little bit of difference. This one shows up really, really well. This is the five star flower from the basics. Here's basic white with the polka dots. Here is basic white with the beehive. If you earn that free during celebration wouldn't the, um, the bee from uh, that beautiful bee set work gorgeous here? And then this is the subtle, um, as I call it, hash mark folder that I've been using that we used at Open House. Now the actual card that they made at Open House was not this one. I've actually put them in the mail already. They were some thank you cards for my managers within Stampin' Up! Karen and Deborah. And um, so those are in the mail, so I can't show you those now, but I'm gonna show you exactly what you need to do if you want to, to do this technique. Okay. And I'm gonna go through the whole thing, so it's gonna be uh, a few minutes that we'll be on here. So you need to make cardboard frames like this. So two things. One, the cardboard is in the back of DSPs and foils. Some of them though, I don't know why, some of them are thicker than others. So you want to look for the thinnest cardboard. Hi, Susan. So um, the thicker cardboard is too thick to cut out your shape. And when I say shape, you can use a square, a circle, a triangle. This is an oval. And where did I get the oval from? The frame florets dies. Here is their number, 160623. And I used this die here. Okay, my little tape. Now, another little hint is I marked a T with a Sharpie to tell me top. It's very important that you have a top and a bottom. Okay, so let's get back to the cardboard. Hi, Deborah. So the thinner that, that you can find in your DSPs. I found the thinner, so you don't have to search. Within the gold foil, the cardboard in the back is thinner. It's easy to bend. I found the thinner in the Like an Animal DSP. And then I pulled other DSPs out and the, and the cardboard was thicker. So you just have to get the thinner. Okay, I've said that enough times. You need two pieces. And when you first start working with them, they're a little thicker than they will be when you're done working with them because when you run it through your Big Boss, it squeezes the cardboard and it makes them a little thinner, okay? So you need two pieces and they're both cut at four by five and a quarter. And you know what I wanna do? I want to write that down because I have some people watching four by five and a quarter that need to see this visually, need to see the measurements. So these two pieces are both four by five and a quarter just like the DS, the paper, same size, four by five and a quarter. So they match up. Okay, see that, they're the same size. Okay. So 
So you're going to take your die, and like I said, I marked the, the top of it. And it will wear off a little bit, but I did use a Sharpie, and I marked a T for the top. And I'm going to place it on my cardboard, and I'm going to try to center it the best that I can. And I'm going to take my post-it note tape, uh, tape, this is on Amazon, and I'm going to tape it down. Now to run this through the boss, the big boss, you need to use your regular platforms as if you were cutting out regular cardstock or or anything else, okay, for this part. I'm going to try to go slow and I'm going to try to say everything you need to know so you don't get confused. Okay, here's my boss. So I have platform, turn it this way so you can see the numbers, platform one. Platform two and two clear acrylics number three. So one goes down, so this is just just like you were cutting regular cardstock. Lay this down <clears throat> and then taper tapered end of your acrylic, slant it under the rollers, and run it through. Now this is gonna be tight. So I'm gonna run it through once till I hear the click. The click means I've gotten to the end of the oval. See that? Then I'm gonna go back again. I'm gonna go two or three times. We're going through thick cardstock. And yes, this is a little bit of work, but it's forever. Once you've got the oval, the square, the circle, whatever you're cutting, then you have them in your stash and you don't have to do this again. So that's how I tell myself that it's worth doing, plus it's such a beautiful look. Now, you're gonna turn this over like I've taught you, and you're not gonna see that, it, you're gonna see that it looks like it didn't cut all the way through, and you're gonna go, oh no, that didn't work, Bev. It did, it worked, but um, you have to help it a little bit. So let's take this off, and we're just going to go back and forth and finish breaking the fibers for the cardboard. Of course, if you see that, if you were using regular cardstock or DSP, this would just fall out automatically by itself. But because we're using cardboard, it needs a little bit of help. Now this feels thinner than it did originally because it got compressed in the machine. I happen to love this. I, <laughs> I have um, made a few of these in case I have a class with this technique and we need more than one and I've saved. See the different colors of cardstock too? I mean the cardboard. Um, so I've made quite a few of these and I'm saving all of these because I like the thickness of them. Okay, so step number two. Remember I said we need two of these exact same size. So now we're going to lay this one on top of this one. Get them even, excuse me. And then we're gonna take a pencil or a pen and draw your shape onto the second piece because these need to be exact. The reason I put a T for the top is because I came, if I didn't pay attention and I came and I spun this around, it's not gonna match up or maybe it's not gonna match up. Um, so I don't want to take a chance. I want to put it on the same way that I did the first time. So now I'm looking to see that I've got this lined up with my pen mark. And I'm pressing with my nail to get the tape really securely onto the die and the cardboard. And we're going to go get our big boss and do this a second time. But remember, once you make one, you're done. platforms. One, two, three, your project, and another platform three. 
it's going to be tight. Not so tight that, you know, you can't do it or it's uncomfortable, but it's tighter than normal. Go back and go back one more time. Two times may do it, but I don't want to take a chance. Okay, remember it's going to look like it's not cut out, but it is. Let's just help our friend come out of its original. You're just going to have to bend back and forth a few times, and then a place will pop where it comes apart. There you go. And then you can just push or pull and get that out. If it tears like this, that's okay. Mine have all done that. Some more than others. Some hardly at all. So just pull it off, get it out of your way. Okay. So now let's put these guys together. At this point, you have a choice. You can glue them together with your, with your glue. But what I found very easy is to take a piece of scotch tape and place it over the top. You want to avoid the scotch tape coming over the window, so my tape is a little too long. Hi, Nita. Okay. And a second piece. We're going to tape the bottom so these guys don't move around. Okay, I can see that that one's too long as well. So there's my forever frame, okay? All right, now the fun begins. Now you don't ever have to make these again. You're gonna go to a piece of cardstock. Let me make sure that I have four by five and a quarter. I do. It's going to this one's a little bit long, let me cut it down. Okay, so now we're gonna take our four by five and a quarter cardstock, and you're gonna pick whatever, whichever folder you want, and you're gonna do what I've taught you always, is to line up <clears throat> the bottom of your cardstock with the black line. I'm going to try to get this cardstock in the middle of the folder as well. It was off to the left a little bit. Okay. So then you're going to, it's open. I'm holding it with my fingers so it doesn't move, hopefully. Then I'm going to take this hand and pinch, pull this hand out, and try to keep that straight. If it moves, then just start over. Now I'm laying my cardboard frame, same thing using the black line, making sure I don't see any cardstock hanging out either side or the top, adjusting just a little bit, and now I need my big boss. Okay. Now, we've got a lot of thickness, so we don't need all our platforms, right? Platforms are all for thickness and pressure. So we've got number one. I'm gonna bring my project. <clears throat> I gotta turn it this way so I can see that I get it straight. I didn't move anything. I'm working on an angle, so if it's not straight, you understand why. You'll be working with everything straight. My tapered end. This is important because I've got the, the folder and the cardboard and I want to try to not move anything. So the tapered end allows you to push in under the rollers like that and then just drop it down. And then I'm pushing with my thumb to keep it still until it's in the crank. And then surprisingly, this is not rough to um, 
it's, it doesn't take all your strength to run it through. It's, uh, it's real easy to go through. Now, if you forget my plate, what, what plates you need, then um, if it's really, really hard to get in, you've got too much. So just take away. And there we go. There's your void. Now, what I love, this was the back side. This is indentation. This is poofed up. What I like so much about this technique is that the image fades away. So why does this happen, you might ask? Why does this happen? Well, when you're running through the boss, the pressure is pushing all here, but we've cut out the pressure here. We've cut out the thickness, so there's no pressure right there. So it so it lets this stay as its original shape, original flat, smooth. And it only is pushing on the folder around here or whatever shape you're creating. So now you have an area where you can stamp and cut out flowers. You can make a little scene. He's not colored yet, but you can make a little scene with grass and happy Easter, whatever you want to do. Um, you can ha use it for your focal point area. This is a fabric flower and add, you know, whatever you want. I don't have very many flowers left or leaves, so I'm going to grab what I have, but you'll get the gist. And I put, when I do a flower, I put it up towards the top so I can put my sentiment there. So start with your sentiment and then place your other image above that if that's what you want to do. So Sharon asked if I would show this because she could not come to open house, but this is what all my ladies learned that day and the card they made, they were all super happy with. So your cardboard frame, which is forever now, and I'm so lucky I have three. And um, let's go back. Very subtle, this is the one they used on Thursday. Hey Mary, here is the one with the beehive. Here is the polka dots. I could see birthday candles in there and a ribbon and oh my goodness. And here is vanilla. So any color cardstock, any folder, whatever look you're going for, made using the cardboard backing from your designer series paper and the oval from frame florets. Now in flame florets, florets there are other dies with bigger ovals. I haven't tried those yet. This one was the least intricate, so I thought it would work really well, and it did. These will probably work too. You'll get this cut out, but I haven't tried them, so you'll have to try that and see how it works for you. I might try it later, I'm not sure. So, um, any questions? Oh, you're welcome, Deborah. Okay, I wasn't looking up at all the comments. Let me see. Just good mornings and thank yous and highs. I think not just, that's important. Oh my gosh, you love it. Okay, cool, wow. All right, I don't see any questions, but I'll watch this back. And if I missed one, I'm sorry that I missed it. And I will get back to you and type in your the answer to your question. Okay, I don't know what to name this. So I just called it, I forget what I called it, the void in the I don't know. But anyway, I'm glad you popped in. Happy Saturday. Hi, cousin. Okay. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.